Peru's vast rainforests are vital to the global response to climate change, supposedly protected by government regulation and international law. Yet every year, tens of thousands of trees are chopped down and exported illegally around the world. We've been to investigate the corruption that lies behind this rotten trade. The Amazonian rainforest in Peru is the fourth largest in the world, covering more than 70 million hectares. The forest's vitality is critical to processing carbon dioxide and combating global warming. It is also one of the most biologically diverse areas on the planet, containing a wide variety of precious wood for loggers to exploit. <laughs> Chihuahua trees can be more than 1,500 years old. International demand for its golden wood is on the rise for use in decks and flooring. Acá en este palo habrá por como mil pies, un total de de 70, 80 centimos el pie. That adds up to about $200 for a single tree almost a month's salary for many in Peru, and the payoff can be even more for other species. The problem is that the logging these men and others are doing is decimating the rainforest and is totally illegal. Millions of cubic meters of timber, tens of thousands of trees, are cut down illegally in the Peruvian rainforest each year. In fact, Peru's timber trade is rife with corruption. It stretches from loggers who cut the timber to public officials who exploit the regulatory system for personal gain, from lumber companies shipping the wood with fraudulent documents to businesses in the US, China, and other countries that turn a blind eye to the corrupt system and profit by importing the rotten wood. 80% of the timber being traded in Peru has an illegal origin, according to the World Bank. Julia Urinaga is the Peruvian director of the Environmental Investigation Agency, an NGO. For several years, she has worked to uncover the ways that illegal Peruvian timber is laundered for sale in domestic and international markets. The problem there is that the concession system is not working. The concession system is being used to launder timber. Since 2004, individuals and companies in Peru must be granted a concession by federal authorities to cut wood in designated areas. An operating plan to log within the concession area must be approved at the regional level each year. In that detailed plan, you need to go to the field and you need to map all the trees, all the trees that you're going to harvest. You need to identify them with GPS coordinates and you need to identify the species. And then you can produce the documents that will allow for the um, trading of that timber. These documents are called the transport guides or the guías de transporte forestal. The problem is that the forest inventories are mostly faked, or even when they're not faked, uh, the trees are not being harvested from those areas. If we agree to protect his identity, a timber trader with more than 15 years in the business agreed to show us the ropes in Manatai, a center of the Peruvian timber trade. Trees cut in the rainforest can travel for days down the Ucayali River to the mills here, near the city of Pucallpa. We accompanied the trader on a buying trip around the sawmills with a hidden camera. A 
acá en Pucato son amparadas con documentos legales. Eh, uno se puede conseguir en el mercado negro fácil, ¿no? Es, los mismos funcionarios compran, compran listas, nos venden listas. Bueno, con la lista de trozos nos podemos amparar la cantidad y el volumen de madera que pueda venir en, en una boya. En los volúmenes de exportación se puede filtrar una madera cuyo origen no es este no, no era el correcto. Eric Fisher is president of the committee representing timber companies in Adex, the Peruvian Exporters Association. Usted me dirá, yo veo toneladas o ríos de madera que circulan por por los este por el Perú, pero eso es volumen. Y si medimos con respecto al, al recurso que tenemos, es muy poco. Fisher blames the regional governments in Peru for mismanagement of the forest and corruption in the industry. In addition to approving concession plans, they issue transport guides. Ese primer eslabón, que es un oficial reconocible en, en estas oficinas regionales, convierte la madera mala en buena. Y esa puede pasar al mercado e inclusive ser exportada. Our trader called a woman in cahoots with corrupt regional officials. Hello. He said he wanted a transport guide for estoraque, a beautiful hardwood used for flooring. A few hours later, the black marketeer called to say she had the transport guides he needed, and they arranged to meet. He left with the fraudulent transport guide. Es una comunidad nativa ese documento. Se supone que no sale nada de la comunidad porque el que lo maneja es el del maderero. Native communities in Peru are also granted permits to exploit forests on their land. But often, instead of reaping the benefits, they are swindled out of their rights by loggers who promise to deal with the authorities and share the profits. The communities provide the documents, the logger gets the permit, and then sometimes they come to lock from the community. Sometimes they never come back. They use these documents to launder timber from that they harvest wherever else in the country. Loggers also cut timber without permission on land that indigenous communities claim as their own. Todos los años, los madereros, madereros ilegales siempre, siempre viene a, a poder este, invadir los territorios indígenas. Orlando Barbaran is a leader of a Shipibo community eight hours away from the mills in Pucallpa. Somos 180 familias, en los cuales dedicamos a la actividad de pesca, eh, agricultura, artesanía. In an effort to stop the illegal logging threatening their way of life, the Shipibo confiscate timber that loggers drag down to the river to float to the mills. The potential for violence between loggers and indigenous communities is high. El ante año pasado ha ingresado un empresa extractor este ilegal en los cuales yo le dije que y si lo están siguen este extrayendo la madera yo les voy a estar presentando documentos ante las autoridades competentes pero el señor me dijo si usted usted presenta ese tipo de documento vas a tener que corresponder con nosotros no podía salir en la ciudad de repente alguien alguien me me lo, me lo mata, así como pasó con nuestro hermano indígena Edwin Chota. Asha Ninka chief Edwin Chota was waging a public campaign to prevent logging on indigenous land. In September 2014, he and three other indigenous leaders were murdered after a series of threats from illegal loggers. We're talking about mafias. This is really, this is a real problem. I mean, this is killing people, not only destroying the forest, which is huge and, and terrible for the planet, but it's also directly assassinating people. So that's what we must stop. Urnaga has been fighting for strong enforcement of timber export laws as the way to protect the rainforest and stop the killings. Her organization issued a report analyzing exports to the United States, one of the biggest markets for Peruvian timber. We analyzed data for 205 shipments that were sent from Peru to the United States. 
For the cases where we could get documents, we could prove that 47% included illegally logged timber. We have reasons to believe that the number is actually higher. The findings could not be ignored. The 2009 U.S.-Peruvian Free Trade Agreement had called for concrete steps to combat the illegal trade in Peruvian timber. The country exports about $170 million of wood annually, representing tens of thousands of trees. Last year, Peru's customs agency mounted an enforcement operation to check on the legality of exports, Amazonas 2014. Con este resultado este, generado con Operación Amazonas 2014, corroboramos algo que ya nosotros a nivel de OSINFOR veníamos advirtiendo desde nuestra intervención desde el 2009. Rolando Navarro heads OSINFOR, a government agency that worked with customs. Established in 2009, OSINFOR sends inspectors into the field to investigate the validity of concessions and transport guides used by timber companies. Nosotros tenemos ese privilegio como institución que no se ha permitido poder levantar una información de 3.700 supervisiones, o sea, estadísticamente podemos identificar todas las modalidades o tecnologías informales que se han generado durante todos estos años. ¿no? Inspections by OSINFOR in the Amazonas 2014 operation confirmed what the World Bank study had predicted. Almost 80 percent of the Peruvian timber for the domestic and international markets had illegal paperwork. Logramos finalmente identificar que el 78% de este producto supervisado y verificado en campo de estas 115 este, títulos habitantes se había movilizado con documento, pero con procedencia ilegal el producto. ¿no? But there have been no prosecutions nor significant penalties levied against companies in connection with the Amazonas 2014 operation. The Peruvian federal prosecutor in charge of environmental cases declined our request for an interview. ¿Y qué les hemos dicho siempre? No me digas que has encontrado tanto volumen de madera que salió ilegal, sino quiero que me digas quién lo autorizó. The um, signals that the government is sending to the to the sector is that as long as you have a document, nothing happens. Right? It doesn't matter that that document means nothing. I mean, that's the problem. And nobody's been sanctioned about this. I mean, you have different people who are involved in this crime. Peru's failure to improve its management of the rainforest is an issue in the ongoing Trans-Pacific Partnership trade negotiations between the U.S., Peru, and 10 other Pacific Rim countries. Under pressure, Peruvian Customs launched another operation last April targeting illegal timber, Amazonas 2015. Tengo acá 53 paquetes de orosa, de madera cumal. A ver, dígame, por favor. Ten companies whose export shipments had fraudulent paperwork in the 2014 Amazonas investigation were given special attention. One of them was called Inversiones La Orosa, or La Orosa Investments. Acá tenemos 55 paquetes que están divididos en tres guías que nos están presentando y son de una pulgada. Unable to immediately check if this shipment of La Arosa wood is legal or not, authorities allow it to make its way to a cargo ship sailing for Houston. Se están enviando las guías de transporte forestal vía web a Lima, a las autoridades competentes, a raíz del, del operativo del 2014 para que ellos hagan un, un estudio más analítico y hagan las, las este, comparaciones y las contrastacciones ¿no? para ver las, la veracidad de este documento. Actualmente tenemos 110 guías de transporte forestal este, emitidas o enviadas por la SUNAT en este proceso de control. De estas 110, el 60% no está en nuestra base de datos. Entonces, ¿eso qué significa? Que nosotros tenemos que programar nuestras supervisiones. A team from OSINFOR was soon headed into the rainforest to check on the validity of transport guides La Arosa Investments used to export wood to the U.S. Supervisor Freddie Pallas wanted to see if the timber really came from the concession noted on the documents, a concession issued to an indigenous community called Lancha Poza. Se evidenciaría ¿no? que, que esta tierra fuese sido más, más, más abierta porque, para que el producto sea movilizado, al menos la, las especies que, que flotan, no son como la cumala, por ejemplo, no, no, no se ve evidencia de que por aquí se haya movilizado. But to be sure, the team docked and headed inland to where wood exported by La Arosa Investments was supposedly cut. Todo el punto donde está ubicado el árbol de Kumala, el número 4, en la faja 25, 
Each transport guide includes the GPS coordinates for harvested trees. According to La Rosa's transport guide, this tree should not be standing, but cut down for export. The team then went to look for cedar trees that were supposedly cut in the area. But this time there was no tree at all, and the swampy terrain was unsuited to cedar. In this case, loggers use concession rights granted to an indigenous community to manufacture documents that could be sold on the black market. In this sentido, se ha utilizado los documentos de la de la comunidad de Lanchaposa para movilizar madera que ha sido extraída de lugares no autorizados. According to Asinfor, La Arosa Investments sent at least three illegal shipments of wood to the U.S. this past April, using these fraudulent transport guides which claim the wood came from the Lanchaposa concession. La Arosa operates from behind this black gate on the outskirts of Iquitos. We went there to talk with the owner about the illegal shipments. Quería conversar con el señor Asensio. Yo quiero conversar acerca de unos embarques que ha exportado a Estados Unidos. The guard went to see if the owner would speak with us. Sí. Dime, dime. Este, ahora el señor no está ocupado y la administración no ha venido nada. No hay, no está el gerente, no está la gerenta, no. Ya. ¿Y el señor Asensio? Está un poco ocupado. Está ocupado. Claro. Pero está aquí. No, es por favor. Pardon? Eso no lo puedo decir. Ah, no me puede decir. Yeah. La Arosa is an important member of ADEX, the Peruvian Exporters Association. La Arosa, creo que cualquier empresa sabe lo que está haciendo. También quiero ser justo en decir, ¿cuál sería el otro camino? Que cada vez que uno compre una madera, internarse en la Amazonía y verificar árbol por árbol de dónde salió el tocón, de dónde salió el árbol. Bueno, y eso, para eso esto es incómodo, ¿no? Sí, pues, pero ahí está. Pero hablemos de realidades, no hablemos de casos ideales. Estas son guías de este año únicamente. Correcto. Pero de las conclusiones del mismo operativo Amazonas 2014, uh -huh. se pudo detectar que esta misma empresa había eh, hecho envíos, más de 10 envíos a Estados Unidos de la misma manera. Estamos hablando ya casi de una práctica, ¿verdad? A ver, y cuando uno exporta madera, los volúmenes que exporta son muchos, los embarques son muchos. Hablar de 10 de mil, 10 de, de, de 20 mil, 10 de 2 mil, yo no estoy defendiendo la ilegalidad. Y es más, quiero marcar una línea. Yo aspiro y deseo porque esta empresa, siendo miembro de ADEX, realmente tenga un sustento sólido para hacer una defensa de esto. The main U.S. importer of La Rosa's wood is a company called Global Plywood and Lumber. According to the Peers Trade Database, Global Plywood received 58 out of 62 shipments it imported since January 2014 from La Rosa. What we can infer from these documents is that Global Plywood was importing timber that was illegally harvested or illegally traded, which is a violation of the Peruvian law. According to the Lacey Act, that's a violation of a U.S. law, too. In 2008, the U.S. Congress amended the Lacey Act to outlaw the import of illegally sourced wood. American importers can be fined and arrested, their shipments confiscated, if they knowingly import illegal wood or do not exercise due care to prevent it. It puts the burden on people in the supply chain to know where their product come from. U.S. Congressman Earl Blumenauer was one of the leaders of the effort to amend the Lacey Act so that it could be used to combat illegal timber imports. The scourge of illegal logging um, really has multiple victims. Uh, it's uh, a, a brutal assault on indigenous people. Uh, it disrupts fragile ecosystems. It cheats uh, honest business people in the United States who play by the rules. The U.S. Justice Department has the major responsibility for prosecuting timber importers who violate the Lacey Act. Uh, I've raised it with the president. I think more resources, attention, uh, aggressiveness should be directed to be able to use the tools that we've got. Enforcement matters, and I don't think we've been aggressive enough.
Blumenauer advises U.S. importers to thoroughly investigate Peruvian exporters and their practices if they want to be in compliance with the Lacey Act. Given uh, the information that I've received, I would think that people would need to be very skeptical, exercise great care, because they may well be in violation of the Lacey Act. We wondered what Global Plywood and Lumber had done to check up on La Arosa, their Peruvian supplier. It turns out the American importer operates out of a backroom office in this volleyball training facility in Poway, California. Kenneth Peabody, who did not respond to our request for an interview, is Global Plywood's principal agent in the state. I'd like to talk to you about uh, shipments of uh, illegal wood that your company is importing from Peru. I don't have anything to say about that. Well, uh, according to Peruvian authorities, um, your main supplier, this company called La Rosa, has been shipping many shipments of illegal wood to your company. I got three of them here. Do you, you know about this? I don't know what you're showing me. These are the documents of shipments sent to your company by this company in Peru. What about this says that it's illegal? Well, we've been, we've been with the inspectors in Peru. We've been to the jungle, and we have verified that none of the trees are, are, are from this wood. I don't know anything about that. But do you know about the Lacey Act? Do you know about? Of course. We the, comply with all the requirements. Yeah, but do you know that by American law, you have to take due care to make sure that anything that you import comes from a legal source? What have you done to make sure that this wood was coming from a legal source? We've complied with all the requirements. We are arguably the largest market. We're the largest economy in the world. Uh, if we don't observe these standards, there will be people who will take advantage of this market. If we rigorously enforce it, that'll send a signal uh, that they'll be shut out of this market, they will lose product, they will be fined, um, and I think that's the most effective thing we can do to not just protect interests in the United States, but to send signals globally. We asked U.S. Justice Department officials for comment about our investigation and their enforcement of the Lacey Act, but they did not respond. Blumenauer argues that a commitment to protecting the rainforest must be a critical aspect of the Trans-Pacific Partnership trade deal. If there is a Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, this is going to be one of the questions about whether or not it will be ratified, is whether or not we can rely on this administration and the next administration to aggressively enforce the provisions, whether Congress will be a partner or an obstruction. This is an area that we all need to pay much more attention to. It's, it's part of the challenge on global warming. It's part of the uh, challenge to protect indigenous people and the rule of law. Todo lo que hoy día el Estado peruano no está haciendo es porque no lo quiere hacer, no porque no lo puede hacer, simplemente. Usted me dirá, oiga, pero hay otra parte que hay que ver, ¿eh? o sea, hay un privado, ¿no? un particular trucho ilegal que se acerca a, a un ilegal del Estado. Los que no deben ser delincuentes son las autoridades de gobierno. It's not one company that is doing bad businesses, it's everybody. Because nobody's paying attention. The government has been making commitments at the national level and at the international level. What they have been doing is just increasing the penalties in laws and regulations. But if nobody is being sanctioned or investigated, what's the point? There are no incentives to solve the problem. The incentives right now are speeding up the elimination of the rainforest and a way of life. Es importante que conozcan eh, desde su niñez para poder identificar eh, dentro del bosque la naturaleza que, eh, que tenemos dentro de nuestro territorio, la comunidad, para que ellos puedan este, cuidar de nuestros recursos. Nosotros como comunidad sentimos como si hubieran llevado parte de nuestro cuerpo, así un brazo de la comunidad que teníamos adornado de los bosques y ahora se encuentra como si fuera destruido y prácticamente en ruinas. 